Hi everyone, this is Steve with Real Progressives. Um, very, very concerned that um, most of us really don't have an understanding of the difference between monetary policy and fiscal policy. They don't have an understanding of the duties and responsibilities of the Federal Reserve versus Congress. People misattributing blame against the Federal Reserve, which don't get me wrong, I'm not a defender of, I'll explain that in a minute, but not understanding that the people that are really in charge of causing uh, student debt to go away, uh, causing you know single-payer health to come into the fold, um, trying to make the lives of American citizens better, um, it, it's not the Federal Reserve's job to make Main Street better. As much as I dislike the Federal Reserve for a variety of reasons, their role is simply to control the monetary policy, meaning lending rates, meaning easing dollars in the back end in areas that we never touch. The people that touch Main Street is Congress. So one of the things that you know I thought would be interesting is to kind of do a discussion of the differences between fiscal policy and monetary policy. The differences between federal financing and quantitative easing and things like that that are completely misunderstood and end up causing us to say a lot of really stupid things. Um, that you know, a lot of people unfortunately backslap each other on and and share and join in and say yeah yeah you know and they they talk about things that are way beyond their pay grade in a way that is very authoritative and they really should not do it um, because funding our revolution requires an act of Congress, not an act of the Federal Reserve. Do you you do understand that right? It's not like the Federal Reserve is going to write. A bill to put student loans for free they're not going to write a bill to make student debt go away now we can do different things with that but that's another story the bottom line is is that both Federal Reserve monetary policy and congressional fiscal policy typically strive to keep inflation around 2% they, they do different things. They have different uh, mechanisms to try and keep inflation around 2%. And we have not had hardly any inflation since 1982. It has been remarkably stable. The other thing is, is to go, uh, economic growth, annual economic growth of around 2.5%. We don't want the economy overheating kind of thing. That's at least the target goals that they're shooting for. So they adjust everything accordingly to keep that growth at around 2.5%. Now, the next thing is, is that they're aiming for full employment or close to full employment. So they do different things to enhance that. But the Federal Reserve, all they do is set the Fed funds rate and adjust monetary policy. In other words, ways of getting us to go into debt. Now, if all you want to do is go into debt, if that's your end game for how to control an economy, well, you're not going to, you're not really helping anybody. You're not really helping our movement. That's not really the goal of a revolutionary economic plan. More debt. Yeah. The only people that don't have the ability to fix that are you and I. So this talk about the Federal Reserve is anything but federal and, you know, it's, uh, you know, about as federal as, um, Federal Express and stuff like that. I mean, we say those things, it's cute and all, but the bottom line is the Federal Reserve is an independent body within the government. Their only charter is from Congress. Congress is what gives them the ability to moderate the monetary policy of our nation. Fiscal policy involves the spending and taxation in our nation. Taxation, which we've talked at length about, is not to fund spending. It once again goes back to the idea of getting inflation around 2% and increasing our uh, overall uh, 
rate at 2.5% for uh, financial growth, for economic growth in this nation. So when people talk about the Federal Reserve, they need to understand that they're just talking about lending rates. They're just talking about quantitative easing on the back end, interbanking dollars. Why we keep trying to put the Federal Reserve in the hot seat for freaking Congress's inactivity is beyond me. But many of you still continue to talk about the Federal Reserve over and over and over again instead of understanding that the stuff they do will really never, ever touch Main Street. It will never touch Main Street. It's not intended to. What is intended to touch Main Street is the policies and laws and federal spending that is done by Congress. So when you have a recession, you need to expand the economy. You need to spend money into the economy. And when you have a boom, sometimes you have to cool that down a little bit. It's not always just spend, spend, spend. But we've never come close to spending enough. So when you hear people talking about the Federal Reserve, it has to infuriate you if you understand that they're not talking about the right thing. They're yelling at the wrong people. Again, they are sitting there bailing out all the wrong people in the back end with quantitative easing, debt swaps, etc. But that is not what is causing you and I to have our problems. Our problems come directly from Congress, inaction, and inability, and unwillingness to spend on you and I. So Jill Stein is talking about doing a debt, you know, debt swap at the Fed, just eliminating student loans that way. That's definitely one way of doing it. But the other way is our Congress can choose to spend money into existence so that our economy expands expansionary economic policy by our Congress. But for some reason, I never hear folks, and, and many of you, I, I include this in, many of you never speak about Congress's inability to spend money. You keep thinking that our federal government has got to be run like our personal finances, like a checkbook. We are monetarily sovereign. We tell the Fed, damn it, we need money. We write the check, it gets spent into existence. It's not the Fed holding us back, folks. It's Congress. It's our presidents that sign laws and talk lies about we need to cut spending. It's not the Federal Reserve. It's not. So you're never, ever going to see the kind of change that you'd like to see in this country as long as you're focused on interest rates. I mean, think about it. The Federal Reserve had the Fed funds rate at 0%. It was giving banks money at 0%. Zero. And we still couldn't spark the economy with 0% interest rates. Do you know why that is? Austerity. Even the friggin' establishment shill paper, the Vox, came out and said, hey, don't blame Obama. I blame Obama. Don't blame Obama. It's austerity that's causing the economy not to roar back. Exactly. It's austerity. It's a lack of spending. It's not because the friggin' loan rates are so... They're not high. They're friggin' ridiculously low. And they were at zero forever. So why is it people continue to talk about the Federal Reserve and not Congress? Why? Why do you do it? Why do you do it? Stop doing it. Again, taxes serve as a means of controlling inflation, keeping the value of the dollar at a place where it wants to be, but it doesn't fund, it does not fund spending. It doesn't. So until we stop talking about the Federal Reserve and we start talking about our Congress, who is actually elected to represent us and who holds the purse strings, 
Until we demand that Congress actually represents us and spends money to existence, you're going to continue to have a lot of smiling people talking about the Federal Reserve. You're going to continue having a bunch of people that don't understand economics and federal financing talking about the Federal Reserve like they know something. And it's killing our movement. That kind of talk is literally killing our movement. You cannot fund single-payer health care, college for all. You can't do any of that stuff. If you don't have fiscal policy that matches your priorities. Anyway, this is Steve with Real Progressives, hoping you have a great day.